video which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell multiple paychecks of a man-child known as the Shape of Horror. It is all the more tragic in that most of the spending was used for overpriced plastic novelties. But had he spent his money wisely, he wouldn't be much of a disappointment to his parents and peers. For him, an idyllic summer afternoon of filming became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre purchases in the annals of American history, the Trick or Treat Studios Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mask and Costume Review. <laughs> How's it going guys? The Shape of Horror back with another video, another banger of a video. 50 years ago, in 1974, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre released in theaters. And in my opinion, because everything is opinionated, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one of the pioneers of the slasher genre, as well as a pioneer in horror. It's one of those landmarks in horror that like helped elevate it. Of course, Psycho had its fair share in helping the Universal Monsters, of course. Nosferatu is another one that comes to mind. Movies like Texas Chainsaw and Halloween, as well as the Alien uh, franchise, those movies kind of helped elevate the horror genre. Um, without those, we wouldn't get a lot of the horror movies or even like video games that we see uh, today and even though it's a 50 year old movie coming from the 70s um, it still stands to the test of time a few scenes like even like startle me still I think uh, one good example is like the scene uh, of uh, Franklin's death where just no hesitation no warning just there's a lot a lot to talk about Texas Chainsaw has been a big influence in horror it's been probably one of the most influential horror movies Again, I'm glazing the fuck out of this movie. Um, I still love Halloween. Halloween's my number one go-to movie. But I gotta give uh, Texas Chainsaw its flowers. And to celebrate the 50th anniversary, I do have stuff that I have kept in the uh, storage. All uh, Trick or Treat Studios related stuff. So uh, yeah, yay, T Trick or Treat Studios, sponsor me. Send me free shit to review. It's a joke. No, it's not. I think first thing I got to do is change out of this real quick just to be more uh, fitting with the video. So give me one second. All right, I am back uh, from changing real quick. Starting off with something small. Right here, we have the um, little mallet. This is the... Uh, TCM1 mallet by uh, Trick or Treat Studios. Um, it has this on there because I went to a convention and apparently they think this is a real weapon. Here we have the hammer. Um, not bad at all. Um, of course made out of foam. I know a lot of people would complain about it being foam but I think it's perfect for casual costume uh, wearers or the uh, cosplayers at conventions. Uh, makes it makes it easier to bring props in as well as being lightweight don't got again don't have a problem with that at all looks pretty a uh, good pretty uh, decent uh, paint job i will say though after a couple hours at the convention the thing was uh chipping off but you can always fix it yourself if you really want to you can also paint paint it to be more uh maybe like a rusty look as well as um some like blood a really cool prop to have really i think it's pretty iconic prop that um that is used in the film um it's used most of the time than the chainsaw itself so it's cool to have this nothing much else to say on this other than you know the paint chipping off but still a pretty good, cool piece to have in a collection room or use as cosplaying i know a lot of the cosplayers um will be watching the video they probably already know about this shit so i think the next thing i can show off the texas chainsaw massacre adult costume essentially consisting of the apron the tie and a mask originally 70 bucks which is um outrageous for a costume but um i think most party cities still have them but 
you can get this for uh, 13 bucks I believe a uh, really good price pretty pretty good price indeed especially for everything that you're getting as well as being a trick-or-treat studios piece most of the stuff that they put out are like hit or misses mostly do the paint job so we're gonna take it out of package here's the package you get the uh, killing mask which is one of three iconic uh, masks used in the film my second favorite mask big fan of the pretty woman in my opinion i think that's probably the best look for leatherface but you do get the killing mask in this and then here is the tie and apron which i will be putting on right now for you uh, first thing i will show off is the tie actually pretty much an actual tie pretty de uh, decent accuracy to the to the film itself um it doesn't have an actual neck piece it's just a zipper so we'll put that on right now a uh, really good quality so maybe it is worth the original price but again 13 bucks is a deal in my opinion and just to show that off you know what i'll stand for most of this video as you can see the tie right here really good uh, sh very uh a shiny material that they used for this actually while i am still up i'm gonna probably have to adjust the uh, camera for this next portion all right, here's a better look of that. Really good tie. Um, again, we're gonna go into wearing the apron now. Now I will say, you get this cool chain uh, to wrap around you. You can adjust it with uh, these clips, which um, I'll be honest, a little annoying, but it's not too bad. Uh, blood splatter looks, I'll be, I'll be honest, looks like printed out garbage. Joking, jokingly, I think Funko has better printing on their plushies than um, Tots with this apron. Now we have the apron on. I'm probably gonna have to lower a bit. Here we have the apron. Pretty good apron actually, I'm not gonna lie. It looks, I wouldn't say identical, but uh, near perfect to the film. Um, the only problem is the printing on here. Oh well, you can always go in and throw in like fake blood or something uh, pretty good for the price you're getting especially like getting it now so if you want to get this get this while you can and I think the next thing is to show off the uh, the mask itself now this is a very iconic piece it is essentially the, the mask you see mostly in like the majority of the film actually from when you first see Leatherface all the way to towards the end of the film you know put this on for you right now tots well this would be like the open mouth version um they also have another version which we'll look at right after this all right uh, i'm wearing the mask now just to give you a look uh very creepy especially if you get like fake uh, uh, crooked teeth I think it would complete the costume as a whole I wish that came with the costume actually that would have been really cool but this is how the costume looks a really good sculpt on the mask uh, not a bad job at all actually I think they uh, trick-or-treat outdid themselves with this one the hair you can always probably rehair it or try to like straighten it somehow not too bad can't complain too much I'll say this the eyebrows are really uh, good I feel like they're really good eyebrows. I think this would be asking for too much. I think eyelashes would have been perfect um, addition to this mask. Really good sculpt, really good paint job. And I did say um, we would be looking at uh, one more piece. I do like this one a little more. I got this one last year. A Party City again for a really good price. Paint job is a little different. Um, I think this is coming from either the version 2 or I don't know if this is the final version you can you guys again can correct me in the comments for this uh, what I have here is basically the basic mask from trick-or-treat studios of the killing mask with a um, built-in mouth already now already like 
some significant differences. Go over that right now for you actually. Now besides one having a mouth and the other one not, you can see the um, paint tones on the skin completely different. The eyebrows are completely different. You got like more, well this one was like cons like basically fuzzy looking. This one's like a little more thinner and it does actually look like hair. And on top of that, the hair placement for this is a little more better than uh, this one. Um, I do, again, I do like this a lot more. I would probably wear this one for cosplaying if I had to. Um, this one would just be more of a display piece in my opinion. Uh, you could probably make a bust for it. I like to try this on for you real quick, actually. And, uh, yeah, so this actually looks a little more sinister, too, on top of that when you wear it. Um, I know people complain when there's um, a mouth sculpt in these. You can take these off. To be honest, I wouldn't. probably would just use this as a display piece uh, rather than cosplaying at conventions. But um, really, really good sculpt. Not bad. I did. I think I got this for like 30 bucks. Yeah, not a bad piece at all. Again, really good hair. Maybe the eyebrows could be better, but not a bad sculpt. Um, really good mask. Pretty scary looking. I think this is like probably one of their best works. I say that about a lot, a lot of their work, but this is probably one of their best uh, works. That's pretty much it, all I got. Um, not bad of uh, of a collection from uh, Trick or Treat Studios. They've done like a really good job at producing mass produced masks uh, compared to like stuff like Rubies and um, other companies. We'll end off the video saying thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe. Helps out my channel. Um, share my content. Be on the lookout for more videos for this um, upcoming season. I'm, I've been the Shape Performer. Thank you guys for watching me ramble and talk about useless shit. And yeah. See you guys in the next video. just outside the small rural Texas community of Newt early this morning. Officers there discovered what appeared to be a grisly work of art, the remains of a badly decomposed body wired to a large monument. A second body was found in a ditch near the perimeter of the cemetery. Subsequent investigation has revealed at least a dozen empty crypts, and it's feared more will turn up as the probe continues. Deputies report that in some instances, only parts of a corpse had been removed. The head, or in some cases, the extremities removed, the remainder of the corpse left intact. Evidence indicates the robberies have occurred over a period of time. Sheriff Jesus Maldonado refused to give details in the Goulish case and said only that he did have strong evidence linking the crime to elements outside the state. Area residents have reportedly converged on the cemetery, fearing the remains of relatives have been removed. No suspects are in custody as the investigation at the scene continues.